on, a, on my kitchen table, we have this metal tin bowl receptacle thing where we keep all those things that don't seem to go anywhere else. Do you have one of these places in your house? It's maybe a shelf or a drawer. It's that place where you put all, all, those, all those possessions that are just have no home. It's where they end up. And so at any one time, you know, it's got like a shoelace and it's got a key to you have no idea what, and you know, maybe some rubber cement and a stick of dynamite or something. I don't know. So anyway, a few days ago, my, uh, my wife Kristen and I were cleaning up the kitchen. We're picking things up and, and I noticed this little white ball in the metal bowl and I'm struck with the fact that I've never seen it before. And so I turn to Kristen and I say like, hey, where'd this white ball come from? Where'd you get it? She says, I have no idea. I've never seen it before. And our boys are over here. So I was like, hey, you guys, where'd this, uh, where'd this white ball come from? I haven't seen it before. And, and the one son, my younger son, he says, what? I don't know, never seen it. And my older son says, it's just the strangest thing. I don't know. I don't know where it came from. Do you know where it came from? And then he like keeps going in the same voice. He's, he's like, it's just the strangest thing. I mean, this little white ball, it appeared out of nowhere. Who knows where it came from? And Kristen and I look at each other and, and we have this look between us like, do you know who this boy is? I mean, for a few brief moments, he's some other kid and he just keeps going with these bizarre gestures. It's like he's been possessed by the spirit of Urkel or something. I mean, for a few brief moments, he's this other boy, you know? I don't know. I don't know where it came from. But I mean, it's just like a, you know, it's just a little white ball and it's, Kristen and I look at each other like, this is not that big of a deal. So a couple days later, my wife is home with the boys and she's in one room and they're playing another room and and uh, she hears this ruckus, and the two of them run into the room where she's at, and the younger son is crying, and he's insisting that his brother hit him. And my older son is going, I didn't hit him. I don't know what you're talking about. It's the strangest thing. It's the weirdest thing. I didn't hit him. And he's going on and on, and the younger one with tears streaming down his face is going, no, he hit me. And my older son is going, no, I don't know what you're talking about. It's the strangest thing. It's the weirdest thing. And then Kristen just says to him, Kind of like you don't know where the white ball came from. And he just freezes. Like the, the, the technical legal word here is busted. You know that moment, like when your junk catches up to you? It's like maybe not that day, maybe not the next day, maybe not for a while, but given enough time, it always finds us. Like there's this great phrase, wherever you go, there you are. It's written in the Bible, in the book of Galatians, like don't be misled. No one makes a fool out of God. Whatever we plant, we'll end up harvesting. It's like one way or another, given enough time, our sins find us out. It always catches up with us, doesn't it? So my boy stands there in front of his mom, frozen. And then he turns and runs upstairs. Because sometimes it's easier to run upstairs, isn't it, than to face the truth. Now this whole time, I haven't even been there. I'm coming home and I call Kristen and she tells me this whole story. And so I'm driving along thinking like, what am I supposed to do when I get home? I mean, I know I should do something, but I have no idea what to do. And so I get home and Kristen tells me that she hasn't heard a sound from him upstairs the whole time. So I go upstairs and I go check in his room and he's not there. So I go and I check in his brother's room and he's not there. And then I check the bathroom and he's not there, which leaves only one option, our bedroom. And so I go and I stand in the doorway of our bedroom and I look in and there in the middle of our bed under the covers is a lump the size and shape of my boy. And I mean, at this point, he's been under there at like two hours. 
I mean, it must be so hot. He must be so miserable. I mean, can he even breathe under there? I feel like I should get him a snorkel. I mean, he just must be miserable. And I start thinking about all the amends he's gonna need to make to his mom and to his brother and to me. And then I think about whoever he took the white ball from. We're gonna, we're gonna have to call them and at some point go over there. He's gonna need to take the white ball back and he's gonna need to apologize. And, and I stand in the doorway of the bedroom and I, I think about my boy and all of his shame. The kind of shame that he would hide under the covers for that long. And so I go over and I sit down on the edge of the bed and I pull the covers back a little bit. And the first thing I see is just this soaking wet hair, you know, like he's been underwater. And so I pull the covers slowly back until he's just lying there all curled up with his eyes closed and he doesn't move. It's like he has this choice. Like, does he continue, you know, does he grab the covers and pull them back over his head and keep hiding or does he just let himself lie there totally exposed and vulnerable? So I sit on the edge of the bed and I say to him, there's nothing you could ever do that would make me love you less. And then slowly he sits up and he opens his eyes and he plants the soaking wet head right in the middle of my formerly dry shirt. And he wraps these little wet warm arms around me and he just starts sobbing and he cries and cries and cries and he's so sorry. And so I sit on the edge of the bed, holding my boy with the covers pulled back, repeating, there's nothing you could ever do to make me love you less. There's nothing you could ever do. I mean, do you realize that? Do you know that? There's nothing you could ever do that would make me love you less. I mean, whatever you've done, wherever you've been, whatever you will do, I mean, God loves you and God always has, and you can't change that. Because sometimes the white ball seems like everything, doesn't it? It's like, how am I ever going to get away from it? And, and so we have no idea what to do with our shame. So we run upstairs and we hide under the covers and we keep hiding because we don't, we don't know where to go or what to do. Maybe you're like, yeah, but you don't understand what I've done. Or you have this, if you, only you knew that, like it says in the book of Romans, chapter eight in the Bible, there's nothing that can separate us from the love of God and Jesus. Nothing, nothing, nothing can separate you. So may you stop hiding under the covers. May you let God pull the covers back. May you embrace him. May your whole life become a response to the truth that you've always been loved, you are loved, and you always will be loved. And may you know, may you know deep in the depths of your soul that there's nothing you could ever do to make him love you less. There's nothing you could ever do to make God love you less. Nothing you could ever do to make him love you less. Nothing, nothing. <laughs>